Hi second graders, this is Miss Joyce here to talk to you about the life cycle of a white-tailed deer. We've talked about lots of different life cycles. This one in particular is not about an insect or an amphibian, but it's about a mammal. Mammals give birth to live young, so you know butterflies give birth to eggs and so do frogs. Mammals give birth to live young, not eggs. So the white-tailed deer is actually kind of perfect to be learning about right now because white-tailed deer are having babies, they're having fawns around this time of year, April, May, springtime. So I think this is particularly appropriate for us to be learning about right now. Now I'm going to be giving you information and you can choose to just take notes when I take notes or you can make this foldable with me. So if you're gonna make this with me, you are going to need an empty piece of paper. Mine is colored, yours can be white, it does not matter. You're gonna need scissors. You will need a pencil. And these are optional, a dark marker and a dark pen. The first thing that we're going to do is take the piece of paper, and if you need to get your supplies, go ahead and pause, come back to me when you're ready. You're gonna take the top edge and fold it down, but I don't want you to fold it down all the way. You see in my example, we're leaving this bit of space so that we can write our title. So leave yourself like just under an inch of space and then fold it. Now before we move on, I'm going to write the title. I'm gonna use my dark marker for this. You can use pencil, it does not matter. The life cycle of a white dash tailed Perfect. Now we have our title. The next step we need to do is fold this whole thing in half. So take it from one edge to the other. Put your crease there. Sorry, the camera's wobbly. Now that you have two halves, we need to have four fourths. I'm going to take it and fold it in half once more so that I have four equal parts that I can turn into flaps on my foldable. Ta-da! We're good to go. The next step is you need your scissors and you're going to cut underneath the top flap on each crease. Do not cut the whole thing in half, that will not work you'll end up with four different pieces of paper. You just want to cut the top part so that it makes like a door. I'm gonna do this for the next part. And one more cut. And we're ready to go. Now you saw on my example that we're going to draw a quick picture of each stage of the life cycle of a deer. Now, I would like to do this adult stage first because I find, even though it's the biggest, that seems like the easiest to start with. So if you go all the way to this um, flap on, over the word deer, this is the adult stage. So we're going to draw what would look like a peanut um, I'm starting with kind of an unfinished oval and then gradually moving down and making this oval shape. Now I am going to give it legs. Deer have very long legs. I don't know if that, you've noticed that. Another interesting thing about learning about deer Deer are everywhere in Virginia. This is a very common animal around here. 
Now, deer have eyes on the sides of their head. So I'm going to give my deer eyes on the sides. And then in the middle, I'm going to kind of make a dash and then thicken that dash and kind of curve it up and turn it into its nose. And then he needs ears. My ears are going to be like a leaf shape. And then his antlers. So I'm going to draw a line going up. You can kind of thicken it if you want to. And then make a couple of different sprouts coming off from the antlers to really make them look like antlers. And there you have it. Here's our adult deer. Now I'm going to move back to this flap. It's one over from the end. And I'm going to do the fawn, the baby deer. This one was very big, the peanut that we drew. This peanut is going to be very small because it's a baby. So I'm going to start with a very small oval and then make a gradual oval. Do you see the tiny peanut? Now I'm going to give it little legs. They're still long, they're just small. And then this time I want to choose, I'm going to have my deer looking that way. I'm going to um, take a line on either side and kind of put this triangle here and then erase the line I made so that it, I'm going to thin it out a little bit too so that it looks like a deer's head that's looking the other direction. And then at the very end I'm going to put his nose and since he's looking that way I can only see one eye. I'm going to put two ears here because his head is turned. And then since it's a baby, oh I forgot to darken his hooves. Since it's a baby, I'm going to do this little scraggly line to show his white tummy. And I'm going to put some spots on his side because baby deer have spots. Now this one in the middle is the in-between stage. It's bigger than the fawn but it's smaller than the adult. So I'm going to do a medium sized peanut shape. And I'm going to have this deer looking this way. So again, I'm going to use my pencil because I can erase it, kind of turn this into a triangle and then erase that in between line. Darken his nose, give him an eye. I'm going to put his ears on the side again. Now at this stage, if it's a male, it will have very small antlers. So I'm giving him some small antlers. He has no spots. You know what? I don't like his neck right now. I don't need to be a perfectionist, but I'm going to be a little bit. There we go. Smooth him out. And then he just needs legs. darken the hooves and we're good to go. All right. My last flap, I'm just going to do some trees on because I know that usually deer are living in the woods, in the forest. So to make a tree, I make a incomplete triangle and then I kind of jut some lines in and then I do the same shape again and again, getting bigger each time. It is not perfect, but you get the idea. And then I'm going to make one that's like slightly smaller. Under this flap is where we're going to put some extra information. Ooh, are you with me? You have drawn a lot. We are ready to do some writing. Now I'm going to be doing a lot of notes in here but don't feel like you have to write down everything. Let's just get down the important information. I'm going to start with the baby. So if you open the baby flap up, I am going to write that baby deer, and I do a little 
I call this a bullet point, a little circle or a dot before I start my note. And I'm going to say, baby, deer are called fawns, F-A-W-N-S, fawns. I'm going to do a different bullet point and say, they have white markings on their backs. And then I'm including that at three weeks old, they can outrun danger. I don't know if you've ever seen a deer run, but they are very fast. And at just three weeks old, a baby deer can outrun whatever is dangerous. So that's my first flap. Now, something that's different about a white-tailed deer from a frog or a butterfly is that the baby looks very much like the adult. Deer don't go through what we call metamorphosis, where they go through a very big change. They just gradually become larger, they lose their spots, they grow antlers, but overall they look the same. So the next stage of a white-tailed deer's life cycle is called a yearling. I will show you how to write this. I'm gonna do my bullet point and I'm gonna say, deer are called Here's the word, year, like one year, L-I-N-G, yearlings, from 14 to 18 months old. So 12 months are in a year. So after around a year, a deer is called a yearling for a little while. I call this like the teenage deer. They're not quite a kid, but they're not quite an adult yet. At this stage, they don't have spots anymore. And if they're male, they have sprouted antlers, but they're not full grown yet. So these are my notes for a yearling. And then finally, the last stage of a, a white-tailed deer's life cycle is when they are an adult. I'm going to say adult deer are at least 18 months old. Females are does, they're called does. Males are called And then the last bullet point is deer usually live for around eight years. That's how old they usually are before they die. This is the life cycle of a white-tailed deer. First you have a fawn, then you have a yearling, which is around a year old, my teenage deer, and then you have the adult. Now under our tree flap that we made, I just wanted to include some other interesting information. So if you are still with me, let's put down some quick facts before we finish. I'm going to say that white, tailed 
deer are the largest or biggest herbivores, that means plant eaters, in Virginia. I'm going to do VA for Virginia. That's the abbreviation. They eat grass, leaves, nuts, fruits, and fungi. Fungi are mushrooms, and actually an interesting fact is that deer can eat poisonous mushrooms, or mushrooms that are poisonous to humans, without a problem. I'm going to say they have very few predators. other than humans. Now, humans do hunt deer when it's hunting season. They're allowed to. Um, we have a few predators other than humans. But sometimes we unintentionally um, are predators to deer. For example, when deer get hit by a car or by trains, um, those are really some of the only ways that deer are dying. They have very few predators. There aren't other animals that are going to attack them. Because they're fairly large. And they're very fast and they can run away. So this is the life cycle of a white-tailed deer. Thank you for sticking with me if you did. Um, I encourage you to like add color to this. And then, I don't know, walk around. Tell your family members what you know. Because there's a lot of information here. Have a great day, scientists.